Good morning, cadets. I'm Sergeant Giselle Almonte, Reserve Philippine Army, and I will discuss to you the important notes of the Philippine military history. Before we proceed, have you ever thought what does this famous quotation by Martin Luther King, the second, King Jr. means to you? We are not makers of history. We are made by history. So as the subject talks about where we came from, where the armed forces of the Philippines came from, and where the courage of every Filipino was built, this lesson shared the knowledge on how our ancestors courageously and tactically fought for our own land and set our land free. They gave their own lives for the sake of the next generations of Filipinos, and I guess we later admit that many of us does not even know our history especially the new generations. This is one of the basic reasons why this subject should be tackled, not only for us, but also for the civilians, for them to be aware what we're made of and where we came from. Shown is a table of contents. So we will discuss uh, just the important notes. notes. Uh, so in short, just to make the long story short. The definition of terms, military history is officially defined as objective, accurate, descriptive, interpretive records of all activities of the armed forces in, Philipp in peace and war. Okay, on pre-Spanish occupation, the Battle of Mactan on 27th of April, 1521, is the first recorded organized resistance against foreign aggressor that took place in the Visayas. The native chief tame named Lapu-Lapu is the acknowledged father of the armed forces of the Philippines fought against the Spaniards led by Magellan. Underestimating the capability of the natives, the foreigners lost in the battle and Magellan was killed. Spanish occupation, some islands of the archipelago were successfully occupied by the Spaniards. And in 1570, they tried to land in Manila. However, the Muslim leader, Raja Sulaiman, resisted their effort. And in 1571, Legazi conquered Manila and made it as the capital of the Philippines. Pockets of the rebellion took place notable of which was the pricing led by Diego Silang, where he displayed his exemplary military leadership style and tactics in defeating the Spaniards. The Filipino soldiers were also organized to fight for Spain and to support some expeditions. Filipino forces were also sent to reinforce Spanish troops during the Chinese Revolt in 1603. General Jose Prim dethroned Queen Isabella II of Spain in 1868. The latter espoused liberal principles of democracy. This paved the way for the exposure of the Filipinos in foreign culture, leading to the development of strong sense nationalism among Filipinos. The works of famous propagandists Marcelo H. del Pilar, Graciano Lopez Haina, and Jose Rizal further nurtured the national spirit. Andres Bonifacio, who is considered as the father of the Philippine Army, founded a more radical group called the Katipunan on 7th of July, 1892. And in August 23, 1896, the cry of Pugad Lawin signaled the start of the Philippine Revolution against Spain. While the Katipunan was gaining strength, two functions emerged, the Magdalo led by Aguinaldo and the Magdiwang led by Bonifacio. So, don't be confused about those two. On March 22, 1897, the Tejeros Convention was called to resolve the conflict between the two factions. As a result, Aguinaldo won the presidency. 
the occasion also gave birth to the Philippine Army. Moving on to the American influence. As the war broke out between the United States and Spain on April 23, 1898, the Americans convinced the Filipinos to cooperate with the America, Americans against Spain with the promise that the United States will grant independence to the Philippines. Aguinaldo declared war against Spain, and in June 12, 1898, the Philippine independence from Spain was declared in Cavite. -Kavit Later on, the Philippine Navy was created on June 22, 1898 by the Revolutionary Army. The occupation of the American forces did not gain much acceptance from the Filipinos because of many restrictions imposed to the Philippine forces as to access to some areas. The harsh treatment from the, by the Americans ignited the conflict between them and the Filipinos. The latter were defeated which led to the fall of the Malolos Republic. With the Treaty of Paris, Spain ceded the Philippines to the United States, finding the archipelago as a lucrative place for, for some economic activities, the United States strengthened their presence in the Philippines. This prompted the Filipinos to again unite and fight for their freedom they have just won. Significant battles followed suit exemplifying the fighting spirit and skills of Filipino soldiers against formidable opponents. The capture of Aguinaldo by the Americans in Palanan, Isabela, in March 23, 1901, and the laying down of arms of General Malvar in April 16, 1902, ended the organized resistance against American forces. To hasten the Philippine campaign and to establish peace and order, an insular police known an insular police force, rather, known as the Philippine Constabulary, was organized on August 8, 1901, followed by the establishment of the Philippine Military Academy on February 7, 1905. On December 21, 1935, the National Defense Act was enacted officially created the Armed Forces of the Philippines and the Later on, the Philippine Air Force was established on July 1, 1947. The Japanese occupation Consequent to the declaration of war by Japan with the United States, the invading Japanese forces landed in Vigan and Apari in Luzon on December 10, 1945. Unable to withstand the very strong adversary and to save more lives and properties from destruction, the combined military forces of the United States and the Filipinos withdrew to Bataan for the implement implementation of War Plan Orange. Unabated, the Japanese strikes caused the fall of Bataan on April 9, 1942 and Corregidor on May 6, 1942. This event ended the organized resistance against Japanese invasion. The defeat of the Phil Armed Forces did not end the armed struggle in the Philippines. Those who refused to surrender went underground and waged a guerrilla fighting against the Japanese. The activities of the guerrilla forces were very instrumental in the successful comeback of the liberating U.S. forces under General Douglas MacArthur, who landed in Leyte on October 20, 1944. <clears throat> Excuse me. International Peacekeeping Operation It is also noteworthy that the armed forces of the Philippines had participated in the international peacekeeping efforts as its commitment to the United Nations such as the Philippine Expeditionary Forces to Korea, or PEFTOC, in the early 50s, the Philippine Air Force contingent in Congo, the Afri Africa in the early 60s, and the Civic Action Group in Southern Vietnam in the 60s.
the Philippine contingents were also sent to East Timor, Iraq, and Liberia to participate in the UN peacekeeping operations. Moving to the evolution and role of the ROTC in previous wars. The Reserve Officer Training Corps or ROTC program has gone a long way in the Philippine history. The Commonwealth Act No. 1, otherwise known as the National Defense Act, provided the legal basis for the conduct of ROTC instruction. The, needed, the need for a civ uh, citizen reserve force has had been realized as early as before the American occupation of the Philippines. In fact, it was utilized even during the long and arduous Spanish colonial rule in the archipelago. A military training course that time became inevitable in the light of the constant. As a result of the so-called Seven Years' War in Europe between France and Great Britain, a British flotilla of 13 ships, headed by Admiral Samuel Cornish and General William Draper, arrived on the colony on September 22, 1762. The Philippines got entangled in this European power struggle because of the monarchs of Spain and France both belonged to the Bourbon dynasty. On the one side were the combined French and Spanish forces together with their colonies, on the other, the rising tide of British colonialism in Asia. In retaliation for this entangle entanglement, a military expedition from Madras was sent to India, then a British colony. Spanish authorities in the colony were ill-prepared for such kind of international assault. During this tumultuous period, the Philippines was headed by Archbishop Manuel Rojo, a situation clearly indicative of the unstable political situation in the archipelago. Father Domingo Colantes, and Chancellor of the, a Chancellor of the University of, San, University of Santo Tomas, organized a group of around 200 students from University of Santo Tomas and Colegio de San Juan de Letran, who underwent military training at Santo Tomas Plaza in Intramuros, Manila. Father Colantes was assisted by a sergeant in the Royal Spanish Army in setting up a battalion of young students for military instruction. These students were immediately sent to action together with 500 Hispano-Filipino regulars and 80 Filipinos to counter the 7,000 strong British regiment. Though obviously mismatched against the British force, the ragtag force assembled by Spanish authorities was able to somehow temporarily ward off the advancing enemies. Their skirmish lasted for five days. The defenders suffered much in terms of the number of casualties and injuries. Realizing the futility of continuous fighting, Governor Archbishop Rojo surrendered Manila and Cavite to Lieutenant General Dawson Drake on October 6, 1762. Though not so well known in the Philippine history, our, our country did not become a British colony foe a while until June 1764. With the signing of the Treaty of Paris on February 10, 1763, the Seven Years' War ended and the British consequently left the archipelago for good. Despite this debacle, the Spanish king duly recognized the courage and bravery the students exhibited in the battlefield. Henceforth, he granted the prestigious titles muy leal or very loyal to these young defenders and regalia royal to the institution to which most of them belong. Up until this day, the muy leal em emblem remains part of the UST ROTC seal as testament to the unwavering valor, valor and the commendable spirit once shown in the face of seemingly insurmountable adversity. 
Exactly 150 years later, after 1762, various colleges and universities in the Philippines would offer military training for their students. According to Brigadier General Jose Sihuko, author of the military education in the Philippines, most military historians mark the year 1912 as the beginning of the genuine ROTC instruction in the country. In that year, the Philippine Constabulary started conducting military instructions at the University of the Philippines on the old Padre Faura campus. All able-bodied male students in all colleges, institutes, and schools of the universities were required to undergo military training that focused initially to in on infantry and use of rifles. Appointed as the first military instructor, instructor sorry, was Captain Silvino Gallardo, who assumed office in the first semester of 1912. The need for severe reserve the need for a reserve officer was further realized with the advent of the First World War in Europe, even though the Philippines had no direct military participation in that international squabble. In 1912, during the American regime, UP and Ateneo de Manila started to offer military training, but their graduates could not find a career in military unless they joined the Philippine Scouts, or the Philippine Constabulary. Governor General Leonard Wood encouraged the development of ROTC units, which were quite similar to those he had organized in the United States, the Philippines. With the representation from the UP Board of Regents to the U.S. War Department, the services of an American Army officer was obtained. This officer was later appointed as Professor of Military Science. On March 17, 1922, the Department of Military Science and Tactics, or DMST, was formally organized in United of, in University of the Philippines. Among the department's objectives were Number one is to develop the patriotic, physically sound, upright, and disciplined citizens. Two is to create a core of trained officers for the reserve force. Three, to take the lead in fostering the university spirit. On July 3, 1922, with the first ROTC unit in the country having been organized, Formal military instruction began in UP. Since then, basic course in infantry became compulsory and prerequisite for graduation from the university. On October 26, 1929, the Field Artillery Unit of UP was organized with a issuance of 77mm field guns, and in 1935, a mounted battery unit equipped with 2.95-inch gun was also put in place. As a result of these encouraging events, other colleges and universities in Manila followed suit. Ateo de Manila, National University, Liceo de Manila, and San Juan de Letran later formed their ROTC units. These units remained independent from one another until 1936, when Office of the Superintendent of the Philippine Army was activated to supervise all ROTC units in the country. Under the American Tutelage, Commonwealth Act No. 1 provided the legal basis for the mandatory citizen military training in the Philippines. The Philippine country's national defense plan was put into motion by the combined efforts of General Douglas MacArthur and Manuel Quezon. The defense plan envisioned an organized organization 
on citizen army consisting of two major components. One, a regular force of about 10,000 men. And two, a reserve force to number 400,000 by end of 10-year period. The second component was to accomplish by the way of continuing program to train 21-year-old able-bodied men for a period of more than five months. Quezon personally handpicked General MacArthur to become the military advisor of the Commonwealth with the responsibility of formulating the Philippine defense system. Quezon later conferred the status of Field Marshal, the highest military rank known in the international usage on MacArthur. At the opening session of the National Assembly on November 26, 1935, Quezon reiter iterated the need for a defense plan. According to him, self-defense is the supreme right of mankind, no more sacred to the individual plot individual rather than to the nation the interests of which are immeasurably of greater significance and extent my own opinion the plan reflects the lesson of his history the conclusion of the knowledge masters of warfare and of statesmanship and the sentiments and aspirations of the filipino people it is founded upon enduring principles that are fundamental to any plan applicable to our needs. On December 21, 1935, the National Assembly approved the plan amid criticisms it received and strict opposition mounted by several lawmakers, namely Juan Sumulong and Camilo Osias and former President Emilio Aguinaldo. One important provision of the plan stated the, at such university and colleges as the president may designate, there shall be established and maintained ROTC units of such arm and service as he shall specify, where every physically fit student shall be required to pursue a course of military instruction. ROTC units in various universities and colleges therefore became source of reserve officers. However, a major concern was that these units had yet to be standardized, although most were yet to be formally recognized. UP's ROTC was the first to be officially recognized. The ROTC units of Letran, UST, De La Salle, Adamson, Philippine Normal School, the Philippine School of Arts and Trades, San Beda, and Sliman were likewise given recognition. recognition. By 1937, the Philippine government had established and recognized 17 ROTC and most of them infantry units. University of the Philippines had a field artillery unit aside from an infantry unit. Adamson and the Kisumbing schools had chemical warfare units. Furthermore, UP also served as the training ground for ROTC instructors and the source of basic ROTC training policies. Under the system, male students had to take basic two-year course and attend training on weekends. Those students desiring reserve commission could attend two more years of advanced weekend training. Completion of the advanced course made one eligible for a reserve officer commission. However, mandatory training was not instituted in all colleges. As a result, students who did not want to undergo military training simply opted to transfer to schools who did not have ROTC units. To resolve the issue, President Quezon issued Executive Order No. 207. By virtue of this redirective, ROTC became compulsory in all colleges and universities with enrollment of a thousand, of 100 students or more. This action taken by Quezon was partly in response to the protest launched by some schools that their enrollment had dropped due to institution of ROTC units. By 1941, there were around 30 colleges and universities 
throughout the country that maintained our OTC units. However, all of these schools closed down during the Japanese incursion in the Philippines. Japan's misadventure in the Philippines had ended, but their service rendered to the nation by, their, by the heroic men of ROTC has turned into a lifelong commitment. <clears throat> Even during the post-war era, UP ROTC graduates exhibited here and abroad meritorious deeds in the service of the Filipino people. On the one hand, they became part of the government's effort to solve the problem of insurgency in the country. On the other, they demand the contingency forces that were sent at the height of the Korean and the Vietnam Wars. Less than 70 years have passed since the inception of student military training in various colleges and universities throughout the country. Times have changed and the ROTC program has been placed in constant scrutiny, especially in terms of significance and importance of today's reality. It drew a number of problems and subsequent protests not only from the student sector but also from the school administration and the parents of the students who viewed the program as militarization. The strongest clamor for its abolition occurred in March 2001 as a consequence of the death of the University Santo Tomas ROTC cadet Mark Chua, who allegedly hazed by senior ROTC cadets for his expose of several malpractices in the ROTC program. This incident was exploited by some leftist organizations who staged rallies demanding the abolition of the ROTC. This clamor prompted both houses to file separate bills on ROTC program. The House of Representatives filed House Bill No. 3593 and the Senate filed Senate No. 1824, which led to the enactment of Republic Act 9163, otherwise known as the National Service Training Program or NSTP Act of 2001, making the ROTC as just one of the three components where the students can choose from. The ROTC training period was also reduced from two years to one year. So, uh, in this na two years, naging one year, kaya hinati siya from first semester to second semester, or natawag natin ni sa MS1 and MS2. So, student can also select any component of the NSTP, thus making ROTC optional. Female students are also required to undergo NSTP as a prerequisite for graduation for a baccalaureate degree or two-year vocational courses. Moving on to the Department of National Defense. So, ito yon. The NSTP has three components. It, the first is the Reserve Officer Training Corps or ROTC. As you can see in the photo, uh, isa to sa ating uh, training day. So, the NSTP has three components, namely the ROTC which is designed to provide military training to students to prepare for national defense. The Department of National Defense, or DND, is the lead agency in the implementation, in the implementation of the ROTC component. So, here is one of the training days. May sinasabi tayong, we train hard. But, and every year, kakanda kami ng uh, Christmas party. Yan. So, hindi lang naman tayo basta training. Bakit hindi naman tayo mag-enjoy. 
So last year, nagkaroon kami ng uh, rave party. Yan. And then, as you can see, sobrang nag-enjoy naman ang mga fellow cadets. And, despite of having a hard training, we party, we party hard also, yet, meron pa ding discipline. So, hindi natin makakalimutan na may discipline na tayo kahit nagkakaroon tayo ng ganyang events. So, the LTS. The Literacy Training Service, or LTS, which is designed to train students to become So, to become teachers. To become teachers to school children out of school youth and other segments of the society who are in dire need of their service. The, commi the Commission on Higher Education, or CHED, is the lead agency in the implementation of the LTS component. So, as you can see yan, kung may nakikita kayo sa mga barabaranggay na nagkakandak ng pagtuturo, yan, sila yun. Minsan, napagkakamalan din silang uh, see what. So, here is the Civic Welfare Training Civic Welfare Training Service, which will involve the students to activities to contribute to general welfare and betterment of life. The Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, or TESDA, is the lead agency in the implementation of CWAT's component. The students can select any of the three components as a requirement for their baccalaureate degree or two-year vocational course. So again, yung ROTC, its uh, lead agency is the Department of is the Department of National Defense. While the Literacy Training Service, its lead agency is the CHED or the Commission on Higher Education. The Civic Welfare Training Service, its lead uh, agency is the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority or Intesda. So prior to the implementation of the NSTP. The ROTC was a two-year mandatory training for male students and also a requisite for graduation in college. Through the years, the enrollment had gone down tremendously. The program also experienced steady deterioration, essentially due to issues and concerns which include, among others, graft and corruption, lack of competent, dedicated, and committed instructors, and higher student instructor ratio. Moreover, students do not appreciate the program as shown by high rates of students dropping out or deferring the ROTC training while many have decided to enroll in the other two components. This has significantly, significantly reduced the number of our reserve force pool who are not only to be readily available in case of war or national emergency but also to perform relief and rescue tasks when needed. The National Service Training Program is a civic education and defense preparedness program students instituted by the government of the Philippines on January 5, 2000 by virtue of Republic Act 9163, otherwise known as the National Service Training Program Act of 2001. So, lagi nyo tatandaan, pag sinabi ring NSTP, National Service Training program, it is also known as Republic Act 9163. So, as of today, many concerned citizens and school administrators and legislators alike are advocating for the enhancement of the ROTC program by making the same compulsory to state colleges and universities. The Armed Forces of the Philippines is fully supporting this effort. 
The advocacy is based on the perceived decline in the appreciation of the youth on the value of patriot patriotism and good citizenship. So, sa PLM, sa ating paaralan, meron lang tayong dalawang, uh, uh, dalawang LSTP program. First is the CWATS or the Civic Welfare Training Service and the PLM ROTC. So, dati pa lang itong two components lang ang meron tayo. So, minsan nagkahandak pa rin tayo ng uh, joint activity with CWATS. So, that's all for our Philippine military history. Again, uh, uh, remember the dates and import important notes on our lesson. So, thank you and God bless.